Welcome to the Lesson 0.1 Overview video. Here, we'll be reviewing the mathematical operations required for STAT 200. In the past, we found that students who cannot successfully perform these mathematical operations have a difficult time being successful in the course. If you're still having trouble with these operations after watching this video and reading through these online notes, you should contact your instructor as soon as possible. We assume that coming into this course, you're familiar with the first four basic operations, addition, subtraction, division, which in this course we'll typically see as a fraction, and multiplication. The first topic in the online notes in this section is order of operations. Sometimes you'll see people write out, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. This tells us that the first thing that we should do is always whatever is in the parentheses. Followed by any exponents. And square roots are usually combined with exponents here. And this is because a square root could be rewritten as an exponent. So the square root of x is equivalent to saying x to the power of 1 half. Then we do any multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And there are some examples of this in your online notes if you need a review. Next, let's look at radicals, also known as square roots. The most basic form of a square root would just be one number under the radical sign. For example, the square root of 25. This equals 5 because 5 squared equals 25. So it's like going backwards and putting something to the power of 2. We might also see some cases where there's some addition, subtraction, fractions underneath the radical sign. For example, we might see the square root of 80 plus 20. In this case, because everything is under the same radical sign, you could pretend like there are parentheses there. The first thing we would do here is what's in the parentheses. So we would do the addition under the radical first should give us the square root of 100, which equals 10. The same thing would happen if there was a fraction under the radical sign. For example, if we had 100 over 4, again, you could pretend like this is in parentheses, and first you would do what's within the parentheses, so in this case the fraction, the square root of 25, equals 5. Next on our list of mathematical operations is exponents. Exponents are going to be written as a superscript. For example, we saw earlier that 5 squared, or 5 to the power of 2, is equal to 5 times 5, or 25. Again, exponents could be combined with uh, parentheses or any other mathematical operation. We could see 3 plus 2 squared. We would do what's in the parentheses first, and then we would take the exponent. You might also see mathematical operations in the exponent. So when we study proportions, we might see something like uh, 1 minus 0 0.5 to the power of 3 minus 2. Now, the exponent here is not in parentheses, but we could pretend that it is, because it's all in the same exponent. And we would do what's in the parentheses first. So we'd end up with 0 0.5 to the power of 3 minus 2, which is 1. Anything to the power of 1 is just itself. The next operation on our list is summations. 
This is the Greek capital letter sigma. In math, this symbol is also known as a summation. It tells us that we need to add a series of numbers. In other words, take the sum. For example, we could be given a list of numbers. We'll call them x. If we were asked for sigma x, we would take 1 plus 2 plus 4. So we would take the sum of all of the x values. Again, we can make this a little trickier. We could have maybe sigma x squared. This is going to tell us to square every number and then add them together. So 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared, which equals 1 plus 4 plus 16, or 21. When we learn how to calculate standard deviations, we'll see something like the sum of maybe x minus 1, which would be equal to 1 minus 1 plus 2 minus 1 plus 4 minus 1 or 0 plus 1 plus 3. There's some more examples of this in the online notes this week. And if you need any help when we get to lesson 2 or computing standard deviations, just let your instructor know. The next few mathematical operations are probably new for most of you. First, we'll look at factorials. In math, a factorial is symbolized by an exclamation point. This is a mathematical operation in which you multiply the given number by all of the positive whole numbers less than it. You might see this written out as n factorial being equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way down to 2 times 1. So for example, 4 factorial will be equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 6 factorial would be equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and so on. We'll see these factorials when we look at combinations. There are a few different ways to signify a combination. Sometimes you'll see a subscript n, uppercase c, subscript k. You might also see it written in parentheses. Either of these can be read as n choose k. N choose K is equal to N factorial divided by K factorial times N minus K factorial. This is going to give us the number of different ways that we can select K objects from a total of N objects. Here's an example. How many different ways can we select two people from a group of five. In other words, we have five people and we want to choose two. This would be equal to five factorial divided by two factorial times five minus two factorial. If we write out these factorials, We would do 5 minus 2, which equals 3. So this will be 3 factorial. We can cross off these because we're just multiplying in the numerator and denominator. We end up with 5 times 4 in the numerator and 2 times 1 in the denominator, which gives us 10. So there are 10 different ways that we can choose two people from a group of five. 
The last topic that we're going to look at is basic linear equations. You may recall from an algebra class, y equals mx plus b. When written in this form, m is your slope, and b is your y-intercept. You may have drawn out your y and x axes. The x axis is the horizontal axis, and depending on the algebra teacher you had, you may have had to always draw arrows on your axes. The y axis is the vertical axis. The y-intercept is where your line is going to cross the y-axis. The slope, then, is change in y over change in x. You may have seen this written as slope equals delta y over delta x, where delta, the triangle here, means change. You could also see this written as rise over run. Let's look at an example. I'll draw some lines on our axes here. And let's draw out the equation y equals maybe 2x plus 1. Our y-intercept then is 1. That means that our line is going to cross the y-axis at 1. Our slope is 2 which means rise over run uh, will go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And this will give us the points that we can use to draw this line. In statistics, we often use a slightly different looking equation. So instead of y equals mx plus b, what you might see is y hat equals a plus bx, or y hat equals b sub o plus b sub 1 times x. In this case, the number that is attached to x is always going to be the slope. The number that stands alone is always going to be the y-intercept. Again, there are reviews of all of these algebra topics in the online notes in Lesson 0 0.1. If you have any questions, I strongly encourage you to contact your instructor as soon as possible. We will be using almost all of these operations starting in Lesson 2.